Hi, I'm Paul. Hi, I'm Diane. And we are Car Zombies. But unlike zombies who obsess over brains, we obsess over our cars. Yeah, my car has lasted 20 years, and I want it to last another 20 years. And I bought mine brand new 30 years ago, and I think I can make it last another 30 years. We are not the pros you watch on YouTube. No, we're the amateurs. The what? We're the amateurs. We watch the pros on YouTube, and then other people watch us succeed or fail trying to repeat it. And what we usually find is that the pros think they're teaching us A through Z, but they leave out D through F, M, O, and T. So today, we're gonna to put Diane's car on ramps in the garage. Yeah, we've done this once before and it turned out poorly. I didn't feel safe during that process at all. No, I didn't either. And all this happened even though we watched three or more YouTube videos telling us how to get up on those ramps. The pros left so much out, it left us struggling. And so today we're gonna to try to do it again and hopefully it works out better. And safer. I agree. Why don't we tell them why we're doing this, Di? Okay. I committed to fix the broken items on the Mercedes. But before I even got started, we started hearing a metal scraping sound in the back of my car when we hit the brakes. So, fixing my brakes is the top priority. So... So I researched five or six videos on YouTube on how to fix Diane's brakes. And in all of them, they jack up the car at the beginning and take the wheels off. But none of them do they show you how to jack up the car. So, I researched how to jack up Diane's car but I couldn't find anything. So then I researched how to jack up any car and I found that I have to find a frame point under the car where I could put the jack to jack up the car. My car's only five to six inches off the ground. Paul can't look under it. So we're gonna put my car up on ramp. So to recap, we have to drive Diane's car up on ramp so I can look under the car, see where the jack up points are. Then I can jack up Diane's car, take off the wheels, Diane can fix her brakes, then we'll put the wheels back on, jack the car back down, take the car down the street and not make scraping sounds. That sounds so simple. It is. <laughs> what do we do next? Next, we're gonna review the problems from the last time. Okay. I found it really hard to drive up those ramps. I couldn't see where I was going and I didn't wanna overshoot the top of the ramp. It was like driving up to the edge of a cliff without knowing where the cliff was and not going over the cliff. Only it was worse because the weight of the car required me to rev up the car more than I was comfortable with just to get it to go up the ramp. So I found myself hesitating on the gas and the brake as I was trying to go up the ramp but not go too far. And to top all that off, I also had to worry about the ramp sliding on the way up and even after I got to the top. Don't worry, I have a surefire way to help you go up the ramp. Great, so let's go to the second problem, which is the ramp sliding. As the car got up halfway up the ramp, one of the ramps would slide on the concrete floor, leaving the car half tilted. This happened over and over again. It took about four to five times to get the car up the ramps without it sliding, and when it finally got to the top, it slid then too. Don't worry, I think I have a way to control the sliding. The third problem we had is where to place the ramps on the floor so the car ended up where we wanted it. Yeah, we hit my fancy workshop table, and we were lucky we didn't do more damage. Gelsing wasn't working either. By the time we got the car on the ramp, it was too far in the garage, maybe even hitting something, or too far out of the garage, and we couldn't close the garage door. Don't worry, I have a surefire way of placing the ramp, so this time you don't have to guess where to put them. The fourth problem is that when you told me to chalk the wheels, I had no idea how to do it. I just made it up, and I didn't know if it was safe. I researched this, but I didn't find any expertise that I trusted. So today we're just gonna experiment a little bit with this and find a way that we trust. Okay. And the fifth and final problem is that the whole process never felt safe. I agree, but hopefully the other changes we made will make us feel safer going up the ramps. And I have a new idea we'll try this time to make us feel safer when we crawl under the car as well. That sounds great. What's next? Uh, I'll tell you about the tools that I bought. This can get expensive. How many tools did you buy? A couple. What did you buy? Two doormats and jack stands. What are those? People wipe their feet on them before they come inside because they don't want to track mud in the house or anything like that. I know what doormats are. What are jack stands? They just keep the project safer. Were they expensive? It was less than a hundred bucks for all of them. I guess that's not too expensive. What else do we need? Well, we're going to need the rhino ramps that we used last time. They were $45 on Amazon. And I assume we still use the wheel chocks too. Yep, wheel chocks. Hey, what's next? Well, next we're gonna talk about our strategies to solve the problems we had last time. Well, the first problem was I was hesitant going up those ramps because I was afraid I might go over the top. You said you had a solution for that? I do. Last time I gave you directions by going like this. 
This time I'm going to show you distance by using my arms. Once you're closer than this, I'm going to show you the exact distance you have left before you have to stop. Oh, that's a great idea. That's so much better than just I'm not knowing where I am and where I'm going to stop. Now I get to actually know I got some time to get to the top or I got to be ready to break at that moment. Awesome. The second problem is sliding ramp. I assume you have a strategy for this? Uh, I do have a strategy, but first I want to tell you about what I found on YouTube. I did find some guys who figured out how to prevent the ramps from sliding at all. Their solutions range from chaining the ramp to the floor or bracing the ramp against a 2x4 so it wouldn't move at all. Why is that bad? Well, although we don't want the ramp to slide while you're going up it, I think we do want the ramp to slide when you reach the top. You're right. The top's kind of like a wheel chalk that prevents the car from going too far. And this confirms my suspicion. See how there's a rubber pad at the front of the ramp? but there's no rubber pad or anything to create friction at the end of the ramp. I think that's on purpose. I think that's so that when the car gets to the top of the ramp and seats itself, if it goes a little bit too far, they want the ramp to slide a little bit rather than having the wheel go over the top. And if you prevent the sliding, the car would go over the top. And, or maybe it would even sit on the top, which would be bad, or teeter the ramp a little bit even, which would be worse. I know you already have a solution for this. That's where these $5 doormats from Home Depot come in. Remember, that's what guests use to wipe their feet before they come in the house. You know, you don't want mud in the house. So. But what you do is you put the ramp on the doormat and that creates friction. Anywhere? Well, I think you won't want to put it like this because if you do it like this, then what would happen is you're creating friction on the way up, which is good, but you're also creating friction at the top, which is bad. So you want to put the doormat like this? Well, I was kind of thinking maybe go sideways with the doormat. It might be a little easier. And that way you could put the doormat in even while the wheel is there. The rubber part will catch the wheel first, and then the doormat will hold it on the way up. Line the doormat up with this line so that when it hits the top, there's no friction and it can slide if it needs to. Sounds good. The third problem was where do we put the ramp so the car's in the right spot once it's on the ramps? Let's show them that while we set up our attempt for today. Okay. So do you want to drive or should I? I don't feel comfortable going up ramps. Okay, I'll go get the car and you show them how we set up the ramps. Okay. We first determine where we want the car after it's on the ramps. We count for a minor slide so it doesn't go in too deep. We're gonna set it right here so the front of the bumper goes to this point so we have plenty of room. Here he comes now. I'll direct him to the mark. He makes me do all the heavy lifting. Just kidding. <laughs> I'm gonna place the ramp down next to the wheel and I'm gonna line up the center of the wheel to the top of the center of the seat of the ramp. Next, I'll place a piece of tape where I want the front of the ramp to be, just like this. And now I remove the ramp. I'm gonna ask Paul to back up about four inches past the tape. We'll show you why in a second. Ready? Ready. That's it. We got the car in the right spot for the ramp. Next, I'm gonna place the mats and the ramp under each wheel. I'm gonna place the mat so it is not near the top of the ramp, but just on the incline. Because remember, the top is okay to slip, but the incline is not. I'm going to do it for this side. I'm going to place the ramp here. As I'm placing the ramps, I'm going to make sure that the wheel comes up on the center of the ramp. and also that it's aligned properly. Here you can see why I had him back up an extra four inches. When you wedge the ramp under the wheel, the ramp stops four inches from the center of the wheel. And now I'm gonna direct him to the top of the ramp.
That was perfect. We got it up safely the first time. And it didn't slide once on the way up. It did slide on the top, but that's okay. We did get a three to four inch slide once on the top of the ramp. We accounted for this by not putting the car too far into the garage. And it makes it safer because the wheel didn't go over the top. And both wheels are safely seated on the top of the ramp with no tire hanging over the edges. The fourth problem is how to use the wheel chock safely. Notice how there's a handle and then there's ridges on one side and a flat end on the other. Do we place it with the ridges up or with the flat side up? Okay, the car's in park, the emergency brake is on. Can you do me a favor and put one wheel chock in behind the right wheel with the flat side down? Just one? Yes, just one wheel chock because we wanna know if it can hold the whole load. If we put two in, it may affect the test. For safety, I'll always chalk from the side of the car and not the back where it can roll. Step back, I'm gonna start up the car and go in reverse and see if the wheel chalk can hold the weight. I'm gonna take off the emergency brake as well. Okay. Taking the parking brake off. I'm gonna put it in reverse because I have to get a little bit off of this ramp to see what happens. All right, here I go. It's not sliding. Looks great. It took all of it. It didn't move at all. Okay, I'm pulled forward. I'm in park. The emergency brake's on. Take out the wheel chalk and turn it over and try it the other way. Sure. Done. Thanks. Take off the emergency brake, start the car, put it in reverse. Ready? Ready. Okay, now look in that box by the wall. More wheel chucks? Well, I bought another pair and I put ropes on them so that that way you can pull them off quickly and get out of the way in case something goes wrong at the back end of the project. Thanks. You're welcome. Can you pull out the one we're testing with and put in the new ones? That way we can go look under the car and find that jack-up point. Okay. I use them both? Yeah, one on each wheel. Is the rope long enough? Yep. Okay, let's talk about what we learned about the wheel chocks. First of all, we already knew we could put the wheel chalk either like this or like this. However, we didn't know which way was better. In testing, we found both ways seem to support the car. But let me just talk a little bit about wheel chocks. Wheel chocks work by creating an incline that your car can't go back up. So your car wants to go this way, but this says there's a new hill here and it's a steep one and the car won't go up it. But that only works if the wheel chalk itself doesn't slide across the floor. To prevent slide, you need friction. To have friction, you need maximum surface areas rubbing against each other. The side with ridges, come, each ridge comes to a point. And so if you put that down, you just have little points touching. There's not much surface area touching the floor. If you put the flat side down, you do have the maximum surface area touching the maximum surface area. That's the maximum rubbing. I like having the flat side down because it makes me feel more comfortable. I'm going to get the friction I need for the wheel chalk to work. The next consideration comes from our analysis of how concrete worked when we were working on our backyard coming up with some concrete that we were pouring back there. We would create forms and then pour the concrete into the forms. If we put a stake like this behind the form straight up and down, sometimes the form would, would, when the concrete hit it, it would be so heavy it would push it out a little bit to the side. And the way we prevented that is we would put a kicker on the form like this. We, we'd run a stake at a diagonal and that way when the concrete filled into the form and it tried to push on it, it kind of pushed back on that kicker. Do you remember that, Di? Yeah, I do. And so if you look at this, if you have the side with the ridges on the ground, this is more like a form with no support. And so as the car's putting weight on it, I'm not so sure it wouldn't want to tip or bend a little bit. But look at this, flat side down, you've got yourself a kind of a built-in kicker, just pushing back at the car, making it a little bit more supported. So from my perspective, I like the flat side down from that analysis as well. 
Our fifth and final issue is how to work safely under the car. Yeah, this is kind of a weird one because back when we were doing the oil change, when I was looking into ramps, I found a video where someone had a ramp that actually split or broke in half. I don't remember the details, but it kind of made me think the ramps can fell too. Was anyone hurt? No, the guy said he wasn't under it, but at the end of the day, here's what I think we do. We put these jack stands, we find a structural piece, and this is a really strong frame element I see right here. You don't want to put it on anything plastic. You don't want to put it on the oil pan or the engine. You want it on something really structural. In the back, you could use a differential, but in the front, just find a good structural element, put the jack stand under it, and I think that'll make us a good backup. So that one jack stand will make it safe under the car. You could put two in if you want, and that's not a bad idea. There, this one's rated for three tons. The car's only two tons, and we're only doing half the car because if it falls, only the engine's gonna land on it, so. Well, the engine's heavier, so it's good that we got a little extra weight capability there. That's great. Okay, we did it. We got the car on the ramps and it was easy that time. Yay, high five. All right, so what did we learn that the pros didn't teach us? We learned to put the ramps in the right place the first time. And I found that when you gave me distance with your hands, that was perfect. And I love how you prevented the ramps from sliding as you're going up them. Oh, right, yeah, friction was the whole key to that one. And doormats were the perfect solution for this. They were. Our, they kept our feet clean every time we went in the house. No mud in the house. All right, I'm just joking. <laughs> and the other thing was the wheel chocks. I found that it works either way, but I think I feel safest with the flat end against the concrete floor. And I love how we're putting jack stands under the car as we're working under them. I feel extra safe. Yeah, it gives us a backup. And now I also know where the jack up points are in your car is. So now we can jack up your car and you can fix your brake. Yay, I can't wait to fix my brake. Yay, I get new tools. Oh no, how many? A couple. <laughs> <laughs> hey, if you want to see Diane fix her brakes, hit subscribe. Thanks for watching. Thanks, bye. I just confirmed something. What? The wheel chocks work. <laughs> That's good. Don't forget to remove the wheel tuck when you're backing up. <laughs>